Welcome back fellow techies. Today's video is something different. It's the Tech Talks episode two. And today we're gonna to be talking about video editing software. But which one should we use? There's so many out there and so many do all sorts of different things. Well, we're here to have a discussion about them today. Well, we have some free ones. We have some expensive ones. Uh, and we have some ones that just do some basic editing and some basic techniques. Some that work on PC, some that work on Mac, some that work on both. I'll be giving a top five list on the softwares and which one should you use and which one's industry standard. The first one we're going to talk about today is iMovie. iMovie is an Apple based free software that comes with all Apple products. It comes with Macs, iPhones, iPads, etc. It's perfect to edit on the fly on your iPad or on your iPhone. You can edit with pictures. You can push images and videos from your phone to your iPad to your computer using iCloud. It all communicates very well together. It's a basic bit of software. It does everything you need to do. You can add title screens, transitions, music. Um, you can add themes. You can create storyboards. You can do all sorts of stuff in iMovie. It's very easy to work around uh, and it makes it very simple to edit films. The next one we're going to be looking at is Windows Movie Maker. Now, Windows Movie Maker is a PC application only, but with issues. Now, with Windows 10 come out, Windows Movie Maker is no longer available for download for Windows 10. It only works on older versions of Windows. Now, instead, Microsoft have tried to implement the movie editing softwares in the Photo app. Now, a Photo app can be found in Windows 10 just by searching it in the taskbar at the bottom, Photos. And in Photos, you can make and create videos and move and with music. You can te add text to it. You can add motions. You can add filters. You can do 3D effects and you can do all sorts of different editing techniques. I've tried to use it. It's a bit complicated to get your head around because it's just a photo app. Basically, you can make PowerPoint slides and all sorts with it. So I don't know if it works better with still images than film. So it's one to try out. Obviously, it comes free with a Windows machine, so it's something to try out, at least as a free bit of software. The next one is Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, Premiere works on Mac and PC, but it comes at a cost. That cost being for all the applications, it's $49.94 per month, inclusive of VAT, or you can just buy the Premiere Pro package itself at $19.97 per month, inclusive of VAT. Now, if you were to do that, it's every month, a continuous subscription every month to use the software. So you need to make sure that you're using it to the full potential. I tend to use it quite a lot during video editing. If I'm doing a bit more of an advanced edit, um, simple edits, I would just quickly get smack them up in iMovie. But if I want to do something a bit more advanced with some proper transitions and timings and everything like that, I would use either Premiere Pro or Final Cut. Adobe Premiere Pro is one of the industry standard video editing softwares out there. It allows you to edit with various tracks. Uh, you can do layers, you can do cuts, you can do fades, you can do all sorts of transitions. It's basically uh, a highest spec version of iMovie. Uh, you can put two screens, you can have one playing this video, you can have one doing your editing screen. You can do all sorts of stuff in Premiere, which you can do in iMovie, it's just a lot more advanced in Premiere. The next one we're going to go on to is Premiere Elements. It runs on Mac and on PC. Premiere Elements is very similar to Premiere Pro, it's just a cheaper version of Premiere Pro basically. Now, you can buy it as a one-off license instead of buying it a monthly instalment. So for the full license, it's £86.56 at the moment, including VAT. That is for one license, but again, it does it does exactly the same as what Premiere Pro do. It's just a cheaper full license. Premiere Elements struggles with certain formats. WMV files are supported, but yet QuickTime Player and 
AVCH files aren't when they are mostly to do with Apple. Now, this had may have been changed with the recent update, but they have been struggling with those certain softwares. Premiere Elements is more to facilitate uploading files to YouTube and to Facebook because it is easier and because it makes it more compressed. Premiere Elements is still pretty difficult to use for a basic bit of software so for beginners it's pretty difficult to use now it allows you to do pan and zoom tools with photo editing but it's still a bit rough around the edges so if you were to use an adobe package i would recommend using premiere pro and not adobe elements our next bit of software is final cut pro x final cut pro x is an apple bit of software uh, and it is again industry standard so there's premiere pro and final cut pro x so depending on which one you want to purchase or what route you want to go down either mac or pc obviously premiere works on both final cut only works on mac now final cut is 299.99 for the full package and this needs to be downloaded from the app store or you can get it pre-installed on your machine once you purchase it from Apple. Premier, uh, Final Cut does exactly the same as what Premiere Pro does. It's an industry standard bit of software. Just like Logic in GarageBand, Final Cut is iMovie's big sister. So whatever you can do in iMovie, you can basically do in Final Cut, but a lot more advanced. So if you want to do different cameras, you can import different camera shows so you can have about four or five different camera shots and you can flick between them by cropping or you can flick between them by cutting them up you can jump between shows now with iMovie you can only layer one track in so you can see there's already a big step up in editing techniques in the arrange window you can do all sorts of mix as well with uh, Logic Pro X because they're both Apple products so they mix really well together so if you are looking at going audio and video editing side then I advise potentially Final Cut and Logic uh, for audio as well. The next bit of software we're going to just have a quick chat about is Sony Vegas. It is Mac and Windows based. Now Sony Vegas is used by quite a lot of YouTubers out there. It is £229 to buy the license. It does exactly the same as what Premiere Pro and Final Cut do but it doesn't have the same reputation as what those two bits of software do. It has the reputation of it somewhat crashing every so often or freezing or not handling large HD files, but it still works exactly the same. And the same layout as what it does on, Final, on Premiere Pro is exactly the same. I've had two screens next to each other, one using Sony Vegas and one using Premiere Pro, and they both look exactly the same. You will realise once you start using the video editing software that they're all very similar, all very similar layouts. Just like a DAW, all video editings are exactly the same. So once you get used to using one, they all work out to be the same. Obviously, keyboard shortcuts are all slightly different key commands. But Sony Vegas allows you to do stabilisation, a flick between different camera scenes. It allows you to do motion tracking. It's very good at editing. But it's had its it's had its flaws, and like I said, the reputation is just not as good as Premiere Pro or Final Cut. And the final bit of software we're going to be talking about today is Filmora 9 or Filmora. Now, Filmora works on both Mac and on PC. It is not free, but you can download the trial version. But the only problem with the trial version, it has a little watermark. So if you're doing a bit of free editing uh, for university or college and you don't mind if it's a watermark on your work, then Filmora 9 works perfectly fine, especially with the free trial. But if you can get your hands on some free bit of software, if you've got an Apple product, for example, then iMovie is brilliant for that. Obviously, it comes at a cost. The cost is $69.99. So that's for the lifetime plan that's the most popular plan out there they obviously do business plans individual plans and educational plans now from using it a little bit of the free trial obviously with the watermark issue it 
works just like any other or uh, video editing software it does all the motion tracking it does motion blur it changes all sorts of title pages and transitions does everything you need it to do but again if you don't want to pay for it uh, you've got that issue of a watermark i would use if you pos if possible i would use iMovie for a free bit of editing now to go into the final stages of the video i'm just going to rank all the softwares we've talked about today in order now i couldn't split up between adobe premiere pro and final cut pro x so i've marked them both as number one they are both industry standard bit of software so they both work the same and they both do every limitation you need them to do. I've put Sony Vegas as number two because it does exactly the same as Premiere Pro and Final Cut, but it's got the reputation of not being very good. I've marked iMovie as number three because it's simple and it's free and it comes with a lot of, um, lots of devices. I've marked Premiere Elements as number four because it just does more than uh, five and six marks on our list here. I put Fillmore 9 as number 5 because of it being the watermark. It is slightly free, but again, you do have to pay for slight, uh, the full package. And I put Movie Maker slash Photo App as number 6 because Movie Maker doesn't exist anymore and the Photo App is a bit clunky to use. These are just my opinions, obviously. If you feel they're ranked in a different order, now please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more. And also ding dong that notification bell to get further updates. Thanks again. Goodbye.